All right, guys, welcome back. I am Ray Ron. Welcome to episode, I believe this is four of uh, How Far Can We Take uh, Digitrax. So today, this is the episode of Discoveries and Setbacks. So I discovered something kind of interesting when it comes to our um, PM74. And what's interesting about this is that it's hidden in plain sight as what the features of the PM74 are. Because let me um, kind of describe my situation. So I basically want a unit that allows me to do a circuit breaker and do block detection. I thought originally the PM74 was just a way to um, do a circuit breaker protection on your command station, but it is a lot more than that as I've just discovered. And so um, originally I was thinking about how do I set up, you know, my uh, BDM4N here to a uh, PM74. And then as I dug into the manual a little bit more, <laughs> stupid me, I didn't realize that the PM74 is not only a power manager with circuit breaker protection, but it's also an occupancy and transponding detection with four sub districts. And... I felt like an idiot after I read that because it kind of solves all of my problems. And basically when I was reading through this, it says occupancy using by local net or usable by local net compatible signal system and e.g. PC based track state monitoring. So what that means is that our PM74 here can actually do block detection. And so what I've done is I have taken the DC uh, 52, I have connected to my track here. Now that's very important here in a second. And um, so basically we've got a command station, the uh, wiring goes into the middle here for rail A and B into our uh, PM74. And then we've got basically um, one, two, three, and four districts. Right now I've got this on the fourth district connected to my track. Now, if you guys remember, this is also my programming track. And something that I forgot to do was unplug the PR4 from the programming track. So I can show you guys exactly a massive setback that I have because I was trying to figure things out. And then um, I smelt a really fine odor that is um, digital equipment burning. Now as you can see here, that is melted plastic. And as you see down here, we've also got melted plastic. As we open this up, that's the damage. So we have essentially fried our board here. Now I'm pretty sure to um, I don't know how repairable this is. Uh, as you can see here, we've got these two, I believe they're capacitor, oh, that's a capacitor. I think these are resistors and these resistors got extremely hot. And as you can see, they kind of burnt. They got that black distinct uh, look on it. And considering that down here, it is bent and bulged. This tells me that the sub wiring or the, uh, the tracers on this board have probably gone bad on the multiple layers. So. I think this is now going to be a donor board for if I have any issues in the future, I can take parts off of this and uh, transfer them over to another PR4. Uh, so for now, um, rest in peace, the PR4. Really expensive lesson learned, but don't have this connected and programmed as a PR4 programmer on the programming track when you put in actual mainline power onto the same track. You'll definitely fry your PR4. So. Rest in peace, that's the biggest setback, or one of potential setbacks. But anyways, what I'm gonna do in the future is this, this DCS52 will be my new programmer and I'll make sure that's independent from one another. So definitely a lesson learned there. So major, major setback. But with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at our major discovery. So as I stated earlier, the PM74 is huge for me because this allows me basically PSX level protection via Digitrax and it's basically a um, BD4N all into one device and it reports straight to JMRI via local net. So I am a big fan of this product. And then there's a much bigger one called the BXP88. And uh, one of you uh, awesome viewers mentioned on my last live stream, I apologize for, uh, I can't remember who the username was, but also mentioned that they were messing with that device, so I did some research on it and found out that, yeah, it's just a bigger version of the PM74. Offers um, circuit breaker detection 
and block detection and it is great. So basically this allows us to do four separate zones. And if you guys were curious what the sound is like when a short happens, um, this is how it sounds. So you can hear, I don't know if that's picking that up. You can see down here the light is flashing and there's basically a clicking sound. Now I'm not a fan of this clicking sound because it's not as unique as the PSX when you have the audible tone when a short happens. And that's not really loud, that clicking sound, but it's enough to get your attention to say, hey, oh crap, there's a short somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. So pretty interesting. But now we get to go to the biggest discovery of them all. So let me go ahead and put an engine on here. This is my EMD AC or eight, I can't remember now, but one of my ACE units, SD70 ACE. So we're gonna put this bad boy onto the track. Now what's cool about it is, notice this little light right here. It goes on and off. So just like the BD4N, it gives us block detection with the lights here. There's one through four that give you block detection on the actual unit. It does have a um, eight pin assembly that you can use for lights on a board if you wanna do it that way. But what's cool about this is that we get to program this into JMRI. So now let's go ahead and take a look at JMRI when it comes to uh, this block detection. So I'll put this right here. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna go to, see if I can get this into view here. So I wanna try to capture everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to, I'm in Panel Pro, so I'm gonna go to Roster. No, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Roster. No, sorry, I'm still trying to figure, is it Tables? Yeah, sorry, it's, ten, it's Tools, Tables, Sensors. And then when the Sensors is clicked, this automatically populates to whatever device is connected on the local net network. And so as you can see here, there's multiple sensors, one through eight. So what's cool about this is that I'm going to go ahead and lift the engine off. And as you can see, LS7 became inactive. When I put it back onto a track, it becomes active. So this tells me that output number four on my um, PM74 is that sensor right there. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and label this. So this is gonna be the PM74, and I'm just gonna put um, output four. So that reminds me that that's the output or district or whatever you wanna call it into there. So we're gonna go ahead and save it. And I'm just gonna put it there. Yep, overwrite it for now. Okay, so that is that. So now what we get to do is now we get to do some fun stuff with this. So now what we get to do, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a new panel. So we're gonna go into layout editor. And now we're going to develop uh, that block detection. Okay, so now that we have this up, so basically I'm gonna do this very quickly. So I'm gonna hold shift, left click, get us some anchor points. I wanna get us a track segment, again, clip, and connect those two. So now we have one segment on there. I'm going to right click on it. We're gonna click on edit, and then we're going to do um, create edit block. Now, I thought that was what we needed to do. Sorry, I'm still trying to Let's see here. Uh, should be edit. Uh, block name, no, create edit block. Okay, um, let's just do uh, segment one. Okay, so now we made a name for it. So now what we need to do is we need to get that sensor here. And so since we since we remember. Oops. All right, so sorry about that. Um, I had to do a quick cut there, but so go back to our sensor. And then now since we recognize that LS7 is the one that's connected to the fourth one here, we're gonna go ahead and put LS7 here. And then we're gonna apply 
okay. And now, as you can see, this has now turned red. So now, I'm going to take the engine off. And now you can see it's turned black. Let's go ahead and put the engine back on. And now it's red. So I think another thing I would like to do, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Uh, I think I'll do that next time. But yeah, so basically that's how it works. That since number four is here, that's LS7. You build your track, you right click on it, you go to edit. You want to do a name for that block. For this that you want to do, then you create edit block. Again, it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes it just likes to take forever. Oops, and everything pops up. So again, this is pretty cool because you can change the type of color that you want. You see there's all sorts of cool colors, um, alternate track color and so forth. Um, you can get really creative with this. And then again, knowing what sensor that um, output is or district is or whatever, um, you can assign it. And now you can have JMRI detect when this engine's on and off the track. So that was pretty cool when I found that one out last night. So that was a great discovery. That means that I can basically take this full scale and this is how we're going to get block detection of where our train's going to be on which particular module of the layout. Now I'm going to expand this a lot more uh, eventually in the future, but right now I can detect only four um, zones. So um, I'm going to go a little bit more bigger test scale and I'll probably be on the next episode. So um, I think for right now, we're going to go ahead and I think we're to the point where I think we're actually going to retire or um, kind of disassemble our kind of aircraft carrier here because at this point, we're actually ready to go full scale with the layout behind it. And uh, some other discoveries that I made as far as the uh, SC-74. So one thing I forgot to mention in the SC-74 video is that uh, it keeps its old um, addresses from the SE-8C. So technically if you had an SE-8C copy table, you can use that. And so with that logic in mind, I decided, you know what, does the SC-74 signaling system work with JMRI? And so when I was testing it, it's kind of a yes, but also kind of a no. So uh, I was able to control the test signal head for the red and green functions with JMRI. However, the yellow flashing and the solid yellow did not work. So there is, I think, a bug right now that I'm going to continue to troubleshoot and see if it's actually a bug or it's something that um, I need to write back to JMRI folks to let them know that, hey, something's wrong with your new SC-74s. Considering the SC-74 is brand new, it's probably something that I'm hoping has been reported already, but I'll have to dive into the forums a little bit. But So again, a little more progress on the SC-74, but I'm gonna stick with my SC-86 for now and continue to test the SC-74 a little bit later. So again, a little bit more um, discovery on that, but also a little bit of a setback. So. Yeah, that was kind of the big thing, that now we have the capability to um, use our PM74 to do block detection and to protect our layout on one device. And that is the cool thing about it. Now eventually, um, I think we're ready to go big scale when it comes to our layout. So what I'm going to try to do is um, go full scale a little bit and take our um, PM74 we're going to break it up into the four districts and probably what we're going to do is we'll put like one district one here, two, three, and four. So that way we can continue with our test experiments and bring it up to the full dashboard level. And um, eventually what I would like to do is all this right here is going to get converted into basically the command and control for this layout. I'm going to grab a um, DCS 240 plus I think is what I'm looking or 240 I think it is. And we're going to try to upgrade the, uh, the brains of the layout and start going full scale with Digitrax and just see continue uh, where we go because I think right now we have basically made this little test bed uh, obsolete and I think we're ready to go full scale so um, I think that's what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, disassemble most of this and then we're going to go to the next step so uh, hopefully learn something from this guys again I'm still kind of a novice with Digitracks but again I love this series because you guys get to see some of the mistakes I made some of the discoveries and uh, see how this um, 
plan changes over time as we find new things to do. So with it, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.